Hi, I'm Craig Middleton, and today on Middleton's Maker YouTube channel, we're going to do a video on replacing our XT60s with 14 gauge wire and a 12 gauge clip. So, today I got Leanna on the cameras doing the videography. She's doing such a great job. I'm telling you, can't believe it. Beat it. You need a seven year old doing your video work, gentlemen. So today we're going to do, do, use these tools right here to change it. We're going to need our 3 millimeter Allen wrench, which you can use from the tools they supplied. Or you could use mine, I like my T-handles. You got the 2 millimeter wrench for your computer cover over here. You got your little pick. I like to use this to pull the little clips for like the fan, cover, fan clip out of the motherboard. That's a handy tool for me. I got a little flathead screwdriver. That's to loosen the wire screws for the wires that hold the power supply to the motherboard. You got your wire strippers and crimpers as always, and your wire cutters, and your flathead. So to get started, we're gonna first of all, I already did most of this work. I did it the other day. We're gonna go with taking the motherboard cover off, which I've done, three screws, pop it out, fan if you want, or lay it over here like I'm doing. Then you're going to pull your bed all the way forward or halfway, I forgot. You uh, have to undo your screws here for your power supply. One down here, then one up here. Then you can push your board back, your uh, bed back. Once you got your power supply off and your XT60 disconnected, which will be sitting here like this at this moment. In this orientation, you'll be able to take your power supply, pull it right off, disconnect your power supply from the wall, please. Safety first, I know, but some people have to be reminded. So then, you're going to do that. You're going to have your power supply is not going to be connected like this. It's going to be disconnected like this. So you're going to be able to push that off to the side. Then you're going to come in here inside your unit. You're going to take your little screwdriver, unscrew these two little screws above your power block, that's your power block right there coming in. Positive on the right, red, black on the left. Easy as that. Again, these wires were 74 cents each. The clips were through $2.25 or something like that. So then you put those in. You run your, you get them nice and tight, tighten them down, shove them right through here. Also, you're going to see I got it easier because I have my wire, my wire mount over here too. Um, Wire, some of my wires pushed over there as I cut all that out. You're gonna have a big jumble in there. You can cut it out with a razor blade, just get it out of there. Or it might be not bad with a connected together like that. So you just take that, shove these wires off to the side. Inside, the, if you see how nicely they fit inside there. And then you'll come back over here and you'll have your power supply. And you'll need to take your three millimeter Allen wrench again, pull these two screws out. Then what's going to happen is you're going to slide this black cover down. You're going to be able to pop it off easily now that you got your XDCs off. Once you disconnect those screws right here, you're going to see your power screws are going to be right here. Negative right here, we're just connect ours because we got to put our connectors on. We didn't have the connectors the other night. So we're disconnect these. Mindful of their positions, although it's pretty easy to see with this voltage negative and voltage positive right here that we can connect. You know where to connect them. Black goes to negative, uh, red goes to positive. Also, it's quite funny. We have two other 20 volt power supplies we're going to be able to use. That's going to come handy in the future, I believe. I got some upgrades I want to do to this unit that will use that. Namely, powering my Raspberry Pi off of that. I'm going to figure out, we're going to do a YouTube, some research on that and figure out how we can get that done. So for me, I'm going to take these little connectors right here. You're going to have this already done if you were smart. You could uh, do this beforehand. Put your little connectors on. Get them all. Tidied up, crimped into place. And you're gonna need your crimpers. Yeah, you just use a little crimper, shove that wire in there, crimp it down nice and tight. One for the positive, 
you know, I want to snip this one. This one seems a little long. As you can see, the 14 gauge wire still fits in the units that say they're for 12 and 14. Or, I mean, sorry, the the 12 gauge wire still fits in the four, the, the terminals that are said to be for 14 and 16. As you can see, they fit in pretty good. The wire sticks all the way almost out actually on the other one, so that was pretty good. This one's close, so I'm gonna just again crimp it, crimp it again now, nice and tight. Give it a little tug, make sure it's on there nice and tight. Then just connect them back up. Pull your little flap out of the way again, as I got. This is even better. I, I'm so happy I took this apart and did this again. Now I got my little crimps on there. Look at how nice that looks. Oh, how'd that get bent? I'll move that back like that. Oh, it's fit in there so nicely. Make sure you get the blue ones. That's what it is. It's the blue. You have to have the blue ones uh, are the 14 to 16. The yellow ones are the... Uh, am I putting... No, that's right. Dropping everything, but that's alright. As long as we've got our screws. So you put your nine screws back up. Three millimeter. Where's our other one? There it is. So again, screw it back on with your. Yeah, ring. run those wires over nicely. Like uh, we're gonna put the wires in there. Probably get some clips along the way to run to keep these wires in there. Even though they do fit in there really nice. Screw it back in up here. We're gonna get this one started. Where is it? There we go. Alright, we got that one started. Move the bed forward a little bit. Alrighty, let's turn this sucker around. Move this light back up here. We're gonna just lay our cover back into place for right now. Make sure it's so I can show you guys that this is up and working now. Again. That's out the way. We have our power. We're just gonna connect it in now. Bing a bing. Unit turns on as normal. Can you see that? You don't have to. We're, we're just gonna um, auto home right here to show that everything is up, back, and working and powered. Gentlemen, it is that easy. Ladies and gentlemen, excuse me. Ladies and gentlemen, it is that easy to fix your power XT60s again. As you can see, check this out. You can see the little cracks in there. It would look a little golden, but it's really. Like I have yellow. to protect my family, so we have just completed. We could throw this XT60 right out now. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to show you something. If we get enough up to. Uh, 50 subscribers soon this model is almost complete i've got one more leg to complete and i can ex I, his missile pods oh his missile pods are around here i have to put them together i'm gonna raffle him off to our subscribers so let's get subscribing when we get him when we get 50 subscribers we're gonna raffle this guy off so subscribe like Get notifications. Let's get this channel going again. Thank you again from uh, Craig and Leanna. Like, subscribe, and share. Have a nice day.